Good morning. Good morning, Facebook friends. So good to see you this morning. We've got uh, 15 or 20 of you waiting in the, uh, the room there to get into our service, so we want to welcome you today. We'll be starting things up here in, oh, seven or eight minutes, and uh, we're excited that you're joining with us today. Today is our Spring Membership Sunday, so we'll be welcoming three new members today, and uh, there'll be a, a time during the service that we'll be doing that, so we're just excited about them joining with us and, and the special part that they will add to us as a congregation. Now next Sunday is, uh, is May 2nd. We'll be having communion here in the service. So you're, if you're watching online live or watching delayed, you're welcome to observe communion with us. We've got the pre-packaged communion cups uh, available in the church uh, office uh, throughout the week. So if you'd like to call and come over and pick those up, you're welcome to. But we'll also be having online communion, online drive up communion. Uh, afterwards, next Sunday as well. So May 2nd, there is an opportunity beginning at 1130 for drive up communion. Uh, we're going to do it a little bit differently. If you've been to the, the past drive up communions, we're going to just drive up under the front overhang and uh, we'll distribute the, uh, the elements to you and uh, have communion, a word of prayer, and we will send you on your way. So if, you know, if you're still a little skittish about getting out and doing things, uh, we'd love for you to have a communion with us next Sunday, either way, in service or the drive up. All right, so whatever you need to, uh, to say in the notes, there on the page, please do that in the prayer requests. Uh, we're just glad that you're joining us today. God bless you. Thank you.
it's so good to see you today. We're seeing folks come back uh, in, uh, in record numbers. People are getting their shots and their vaccinations. Uh, in the case of you know, Bobby Brooks, she's uh, moving and are moved already. And uh, I want to welcome to the, uh, Debbie Tortello is back with us today after a busy tax season. You know. Well, aren't you stuck here for what, a, week, a few weeks more than they extend it? Uh, We'll, we'll see. Fun, 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 right? That's right. Well, welcome, Debbie, and uh, we're just thrilled uh, to have you here today. Uh, Alice has got some announcements for us. Go right ahead. Okay, let's see. This is the day Lord has made. He's here with us because we're getting more of our family are coming in here. Amen. Okay, Catherine, can you hear me? Good. Leela, can you hear me? No, she can't. <laughs> okay, I'll have to talk louder so Leela can hear me. <laughs> uh, do we have any first time visitors in person or online this morning? None. We are all family. Uh, even if you're watching this as a recording later this week, please comment if this is your first time, so we can honor you as our special guest. Amen. Our next church workday is Saturday, May 1st at 8.30 a.m. And I can see there's going to be spring bulbs that need to be deadheaded and things like that out there, so <laughs> plus work around the church. Be sure to check the calling club names in your uh, program today. Uh, each week there are three random names th that will appear under the calling club section in the bulletin. Uh, reach out, say hi, and encourage these friends with a call or a card. Believe me, it means a lot. And those names this week, Alice, are Gail Fronick, Roy Rule, and Debbie Diddy. And uh, I could interject too, I actually spoke with Roy Rule earlier, uh, or last week, and uh, he was just so thrilled. He'd been back to the doctor, and the doctor told him, I mean, he has the kidney cancer, the pancreatic cancer, but the doctor told him that there was no new growth uh, in, in his latest checkup. So that was over a period of about 12 weeks. So he was quite, uh, quite you know, happy about that. So keep praying for Roy. And uh, Lori, if you're watching, we love you, buddy, and, and thank you for keeping us updated on your progress. And he's hopeful of being here with us uh, sometime in May. So let's keep our fingers crossed on that. Keep praying for Roy. Amen. If you know anyone who could use encouragement from a Christian perspective, please give Pastor Wendell a name with their information. Contact methods for now are one, telephone, two, email, three, letter mail, snail mail, whatever. Let's ask the Holy Spirit to lead folks to our church family. Contact forms are available. Let's see, I think it's over on that side I saw them, are available in the North at Narthex counter out there. Today is our Spring Membership Sunday. A special welcome to new members, Jessica, Jessica Agu Aguilar, Aguilar uh, Tiffany Sprouse, and Terry Sargent. Let's give them all a huge, warm welcome. And, and why don't we just pause there for a second, uh, Alice, we've got Terry, if you're watching, you're watching from Florida. I know you're visiting an aunt down there, so we've we've got your membership certificates here. Let me give Jessica hers. All right, you guys just pass that down to her. Jessica, welcome. And Tiffany, Tiffany's over here. So there she is. Tiffany, welcome, welcome. So let's give another big hand for our newest members. And I will superimpose. I'll be Terry Sargent just for a moment and thank everyone. Okay? <laughs> Next week is Communion Sunday. We will have communion as regular, 
uh, at the 9 a.m. service and also drive up communion beginning at 1130 under the main entrance out here overhang. Please make your plans to attend one or the other. Now, May 9th is Mother's Day. This is two weeks away. Doesn't seem possible to me, but it is. We will have special guests, Lindsay and Josh Smith, with us, plus Baby Colton. We've been praying a lot for Baby Colton. Lindsay will share her special Mother's Day thoughts and come and hear her testimony and see the miracle baby that so many of us have prayed for. And also, Alice, uh, regarding this day, uh, Carol has an additional announcement uh, regarding Mother's yes, Day she'd Carol. like to make. We're going to have a brunch afterwards downstairs. Does anybody like to help and be part of it? See me after church. Amen. Somebody's wearing a blue sweater down here. We've got more than one Carol with news. <laughs> Well, why don't you share your news with us right now? So me and Sam had a healthy baby boy this past Tuesday. Oh, wow. Cody and Sam had a baby boy. Yes. Tuesday. Everett Elsmere. And Everett Elsmere. Okay. Everett Elsmere. Okay. We'll have to get the spelling on that before we go live on it in Facebook, just so we get it right. <laughs> Amen. Thank you. Congratulations, <laughs> Grandma. Thank you. Uh, Looking ahead, May 23rd will be our Patriotic Sunday celebrating Memorial Day. This year, our special guest will be a Lake County bagpiper, John Mendes. Invite your family and friends for this big day, Amen. particularly if you've got a Scottish background, which I do. <laughs> there you go. It's going to be quite a day. Flowers today, the beautiful flowers up here, are given by Judy Addison in memory of Mildred Fronick, Cindy Fronick, Peters, and Guy Addison, all who had April birthdays. Thank you, Judy. Amen. And speaking of birthdays, oh. Jane Beach, where are you? There she is. She is 39 again today. That's the official word. Amen. Mike, how does it feel to be married to a younger woman? You will be out. <laughs> hey, Jane, happy birthday to you. Anybody else got a birthday? Are we celebrating this week? All right, Laura, cue it up. Let's sing happy birthday to Jane. today on the uh, second page it our hymn uh, is uh, labeled uh, 372 but the name on it is wrong the hymn that we're singing is Jesus keep me near the cross so that's just one small note and that's the one we will be singing Jesus keep me near the cross are there any other comments from the congregation or news? Yes. I don't. I don't have nine o'clock. We're referring to. Oh, ten o'clock. Regular service time next Regular week. Regular service yeah. is yeah. 10 o'clock, and then 11.30, he'll have it out here in front. Okay. I, I just want to make sure I could have. The brain goes in different directions for me. <laughs> we can only tolerate one time change per quarter. 
<laughs> so that's it. Yeah, but thank, thank you for bringing that to our attention. He made, he, he's made his two mistakes. Now I'm, I'm starting on mine. <laughs> okay, if there are no other announcements, let's all please rise for the call to worship. The people of God were made for worship, to sing and to praise, to laugh and to dance. The people of God were made for God's presence, for pleasure and praise, for joy and for song. Come, holy people, God's chosen disciples, gather for worship, come from all places. We have come to God's temple, gathered together. We have come to praise God and enjoy him forever. Let's join in singing hymn 307, There is a name I love to hear. Amen. I'd certainly be remiss if I didn't welcome back. Uh, I'm pretty sure she's our senior member, Leela Pagel. What a blessing it is. The last time I saw Leela, we were waving to her last July on her 100th birthday and sitting in her yard in the middle of this pandemic. So Leela, God bless you. We're so glad that you're back. Amen. We love you. Amen. All right, 307, let's do one and four, Laura. We love the name of Jesus. There it is a name I love to hear. I love to sing its word. It sounds like music in my ear. The sweetest name. join in the invocation. In the beauty of this moment, we worship you. In the fellowship of your people, we worship you. In the presence of your spirit, we worship you. In the company of all creation, we worship you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. And now, Let's spend a little time passing the peace. Amen.
So you've been working in the field? Yeah, a little bit. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. so much. Good to have the young ladies here today. All right. Give me that. And this is for helping hands today. Helping hands today? Okay. All right. Here you are. Harry was committed elsewhere today, so... <laughs> He may be watching. We miss you, brother. I'm on again. Our scripture reading today is one of the Psalms from David, 
ascribe to Lord glory. Ascribe to the Lord, O heavenly beings, ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Worship the Lord in the splendor of holiness. The voice of the Lord is over the waters. The God of glory thunders the Lord over many waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedars. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. He makes Lebanon to skip like a scaf, calf, and Syrian like a wild young ox. The voice of the Lord flashes forth flames of fire. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord makes the deer give birth and strips the forest bare, and in his temple all cry glory. The Lord sits enthroned over the flood. The Lord sits enthroned as king forever. May the Lord give strength to his people. May the Lord bless his people with peace. Amen. Of the prayer and the song of David. Amen. Amen. It's a precious psalm, Psalm 29, Alice has just read for us. And it all kind of ties in together with, uh, with the series of mes messages we've been doing since Easter, uh, the Following God series, with today's message being Hearing God's Voice. Hearing God's Voice. Uh, <laughs> if you, have you seen any of the commercials on TV about uh, uh, the, the pandemic? I was kind of laughing as I was thinking about this message and watching one of those commercials the other day where they, uh, uh, you can almost hear them saying, you know, take, take the vaccine, you know? <laughs> that's, that's the message that says God, God's voice to us telling us to get vaccinated, take the vaccine. There's a, there's a lot of, uh, a lot of pros and cons and the things going on with the Johnson and Johnson, I guess, that uh, cause some issues, but uh, uh, we just hope and pray that uh, as folks are vaccinated, that it, it has the effect that they tell us it's going to have. And it seems to be the case so far. And I'm due for my second shot this Tuesday, this Tuesday afternoon. So I'm, I'm looking forward to getting that taken care of and being, being up to speed. But more and more of you have been calling and saying, you know, I got my second shot. I'm going to wait a couple of weeks and I'll be back to church. And uh, Bobby was one of those that fell into that category. We're good to see you her back, and Leela, and everybody that's here. It's just, just a blessing to be in God's house. We, uh, we take so much for granted. We take so much for granted. I don't say that to you. I mean, I, I do too. Uh, I'm sure not to start the service on a message on a downer, but uh, I, uh, on one side of me lives Laura's sister as a neighbor. On the other side was a gentleman and his wife, uh, Joe and Marsha Autry. Marsha showed up in my driveway the other day and uh, said, Mrs. Just wanted you and Kathy to know that uh, Joe passed away last night. And uh, it, uh, as it just did right now, it hit me with such a cold chill that uh, I didn't expect. I mean, this is one of the guys where you, you see your next door neighbor and we had the, the typical, you know, relationship where, hey, Wendell, you know, and, and that kind of stuff, and he, if he's going someplace and I'm out in the yard, he'd toot his horn, you know, and I'd throw my hand up, and uh, just a good guy, just a good guy, and so it really caught, caught me by surprise with all that, but his wake is this afternoon there in Munster, and so we will we'll be going to that, uh, but uh, pray for Marsha, Marsha Autry, as, as things begin to unfold. She told me that, uh, that she's well in her 80s as well, and, uh, but she's got some help there with a couple sons that live in the area, and that she she loves her home and, and wants to stay. So we're we're uh, we're thrilled that she uh, she feels that way. And also keep in prayer too. Uh, we visit, went to visit uh, Dean Downey. He's in Community Hospital. Uh, Dean is uh, Dean is not doing well. So we're, I'm not quite sure how that's all going to shake out. But uh, in speaking with. Got to see him personally there in community. It's the first hospital visit I've been able to make in, in quite some time. Uh, and uh, it was, uh, you, you felt like you were going through a, a 
Gestapo checkpoint or something like that into the hospital being frisked and, 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 you know, just, it was just different. It was different. But I was glad I was able to visit him and have prayer with him. Uh, but uh, keep, keep Dean on your heart. And uh, we've also got Steve Becker, who's probably watching right now. He's at home. Uh, we just keep praying for him and for Robin. There's so much on our plate, so much on our plate. We just appreciate you sharing, bringing these folks to God in prayer. So hearing God's voice, hearing God's voice. I'm always reminded when I'm reading, I uh, was reading in the book of Exodus uh, this past week, Exodus chapter 3. When Moses, Moses had been exiled from Egypt, you know, he'd run away and he'd killed an Egyptian and uh, he'd, he'd run away and he found a wife and he was just as far away from Egypt as he could get, or so he thought. And, uh, but God knew where he was at. Have you ever tried to run away from something in your life? You think, I'm just going to run as far and as fast away from this as I can, and I'm going to put it behind me. And it caught up with you. Whatever it was, it caught up with you. And time and circumstances caught up with Moses there in Exodus chapter 3 because God got his attention. Y'all know a story about, uh, I'm starting to sound southern here, y'all, <laughs> about how, how Moses was looking over there, he was tending to the sheep, and he's looking over there, and he saw a bush, and that bush was doing what? It was burning, but it was not being consumed. We're familiar with this story. We know about Moses and this burning bush, but I want to approach it from a, from a little different point today. Moses was in a place where some of us find ourselves sometimes where God has to get our attention. Now, if I was trucking along doing what he was doing or just about anything else, or I'm driving my car, doing whatever, and I see a bush burning and it's not being consumed, that's going to get my attention. I'm going to be interested in that. Because the scripture tells us here, well, let me just read what the scripture tells us here in Exodus chapter 3, because I want us to, to notice this carefully. It says there in verse 1 of Exodus chapter 3, And Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian, and he led the flock to the backside of the desert and came to the mountain of God, even to Horeb. Now this is a, Horeb was a mountain range there, which Mount Sinai was on that mountain range. This is where Moses will later receive God's Ten Commandments. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of the bush. And he looked, and behold, the bush burned with fire, and the bush was not consumed. And Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight, why this bush is not burned. So God gets Moses' attention here. Scripture tells us that the angel of the Lord, now, there's a lot of different fancy phrases in the Bible, you know, about the theophanies and things like that, about before Jesus was actually born, this is a pre-incarnate, before he was incarnated in human form inside of Mary, uh, there's a, a pre-incarnate, a before appearance of the Lord Jesus in this bush. The angel of the Lord. You say, well, Pastor, how, how do you get that out of that? How do you know that this was, was Jesus in that way? We're, we're going to get there in just a second. But God got his attention. God got Moses' attention. And he turned away and he says, I want to see what's going on here. And I want to find out more. And in verse 4, it gives you the answer to the question that I just asked here. Because he's referred to in verse 2 as the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in this flame. But in verse 4 it says, And when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, God called unto him out of the midst of the bush, and Moses and said, Moses, Moses, and he says, Here am I. Now this is one of those passages, if we're not careful, we miss who is doing the calling. We miss when we see the phrase angel of the Lord, we think that it's one of God's angels as he sent there to announce the birth of Jesus some later on. But this is none other than that Jesus. 
This is our pre-incarnate God before he was made flesh. Because scripture refers to him there in the next few verses as God and the Lord. So he is the one that is talking with Moses. And he's given a simple task here. He wanted to get Moses' attention. How many times in your life or, or my life when the voice of God calls, we go, eh? Ever you done that? Ever done, guys, have you done, ever done that with your wife? She calls and tells you to do something, and you know she wants you to do something. And you go, honey, what you do? Huh? Can't hear you. We're bad that way, guys, aren't we? And, of course, ladies, I know that you would never, never do that. And it's reciprocation. Never. Never. Sometimes, as my grandmother used to say to my grandpa, boy, they were... They loved each other to death, but they would just. Grandpa said that they would, would fight like cats and dogs sometimes, and uh, or fight at the drop of a hat. He would carry the hat around just to, <laughs> so he could drop it. But they loved each other. But they would push each, push each other's buttons sometimes. I guess is what I'm trying to say. But sometimes we ignore things. Our, our, our hearing is convenient, and we, we ignore things that we necessarily don't want to hear. It's important, though, Moses turned aside. God saw that he had his attention here. And it's important here that we understand when God gets our attention that it's for a purpose and it's for a reason. If he gets your attention, as he did with Moses here, he has a job for you to do. He has jobs for all of us to do. And there's some, there are some times that there's only jobs. I mean, I see Bonnie out of the corner of my eye. There's things that Bonnie can do in, in her life, in her circle of friends, and in, in her relationships with people that, that I can't. And there's things that people in my life and such that it reciprocates where she can't do anything for them. And with each one of you, if we were to go and we talk about your relationships that you have with individuals, that's the case because it's specific to you. And when God wanted to use Moses as he wanted to use him, he wants to use you in the exact same way to meet someone at the point of their need. He wants you to hear his voice, and he wants you like Moses. When you see something going, he wants you to turn and notice and want to know more. Want to know more about how God wants to use you to accomplish his will. So hearing God's voice this morning is very, very important. It's, it's important. It's a start. It's a start. And there's a couple of things that go on here. As God gets our attention, he tells Moses uh, as he's, he's approaching this bush, uh, he, he, he says in verse 5 of chapter 3, the Lord says, you know, don't come any closer. The King James says, draw not hither. Or draw not nigh hither. He says, you know, don't come any closer, Moses, but put your shoes off from off your feet, for the place that you're going to stand is holy ground. So he sees this bush off in a distance, and he hears the voice of God, and, and he's, you know, God realizes he's got his attention because he's walking toward this bush to check it out. And he says, You're walking toward holy ground, Moses. Take your sandals off. Now, I don't have sandals on this morning. If I did have sandals on, I could do this, and what would happen? They'd probably flick off, right? Or if I had you know, some kind of flip-flop on. I was tempted, Gail, to, to wear flip-flops this morning just so I could do that. But I figured they would clash with my suit, you know. But taking his sandals off was easy. That was easy. He takes them off, though, but he, he gets into a situation where so God, God, God says, I've got your attention, I've got you where you want, now I've got a message for you. I want you to go back 
to Egypt. I want you to carry because I've heard the cry of my people who are in bondage, who are in pain, and who need deliverance from the Egyptians. And I want you to be my man. I want you to carry my message to Pharaoh to let my people go. I want you to hear my voice. Flicking your shoes off and walking on holy ground, that's easy, right? That's simple. That's straightforward. And Moses, uh, he says, well, wait a minute, God. Wait a minute. Are you sure you've got the right person? Are you sure you got the right person here? You know who you're talking to. I fled from Egypt 40-some years ago. They wanted to kill me. You must be thinking of someone else. God says, nope, it's you. It's you. How many times have you and myself, you and I, use what God says, well, I got a job for you to do. Lord, there's got to be somebody more qualified than me. Got to be somebody younger, somebody uh, better looking, somebody more talented. I mean, there's got to be somebody else. You can't use me. He goes, nope, it's you, it's you. And we appreciate the, the wonderful job Laura does for us every week on the organ. And uh, she does a phenomenal job on the piano as well. I remember as a 10-year-old boy, probably kind of hard to imagine me as a 10-year-old boy, isn't it? But I was once, I promise you. 10-year-old boy, I had taken piano lessons for six months. Six months. I wasn't even through the second book. <laughs> and the pastor and his wife left. And they were the church musicians. There was no one else to play. No one else had been taking lessons. No one else was even remotely qualified. And so... The church council at that time, I guess, said, Wendell, would you play for us? <laughs> what? He said, surely you can't be talking to me. There's got to be somebody more qualified. Can't we hire somebody? I'm 10 years old. I'm afraid to stand up in front of the church, let alone go up there and try to play something. That was a long time ago, 55 years ago, exactly. I played for a long time, still play, still love to enjoy it. And uh, I don't know that I'm any better now than I was then though, but uh, we, we still like it. But God is blessed and he's used whatever talent that I had as a 10 year old boy, he used it. I did get better. I did get better. That first song, every time we sing, What a Friend We Have in Jesus, I remember that service. It takes me back to that service when God used me to play. There was infinitely more qualified people that could have been there that day, but he used me. And he continued to use me. He'll continue to use you, even though we feel we're not good enough or we fall short in certain areas. He just wants us to be willing, willing to listen and obey. A song Laura plays for us quite frequently, trust and obey. There's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. Moses was faced with a Conundrum, as we say. He didn't want to go back to Egypt. He didn't want to be God's front man to Pharaoh. He was afraid. I've been afraid a lot. And I imagine you have too. But God gave him specific instructions. He gave him specific encouragement. He says there in verse 10 of the same chapter 3 in Exodus, he, sold, he says, I will send you unto Pharaoh that you may, may bring forth my people, the children of Israel. And again, Moses says, you know, who am I, Lord, that I can do this? And God says, I've called you to a task. 
I'll be with you to accomplish that task. So the moral of the story is how we bring it forward from Moses' day to us. If God calls us to do something, if he calls us to be a ministry witness uh, of our life and our testimony to a family member, to a coworker, to a friend, to a classmate at school, uh, to, to somebody standing in the checkout line, six feet apart, mind you, at, uh, at the grocery store, he'll equip you to handle that task. He'll equip you with what you need to say. He'll equip you with how you need to serve that, that person or that situation so that God can get the honor and glory as he was going to do with Moses. He's the same God, and he loves you the same way as he loved Moses. Do you know him today? When God hears, when we hear God's voice, and we see the, the bush burning in our lives, and we turn aside when he gets our attention. He gets our attention. Do we listen? Do we listen? Do we trust and obey? He wants you to. He wants you to use you. He wants to use me. He wants to use our church. He wants to use St. John's United Church of Christ to be a blessing to people in this community. He wants to help us glorify his name. If you don't know Jesus is your Savior, those of you watching online today, or those, those that are here, if you never come to that place in time, I'm not talking about being religious. I'm not talking about being good. I'm not talking about turning over a new leaf. I'm talking about coming to know Jesus as the only one who can forgive you of your sins. Admit to him you're a sinner. Believe that Jesus Christ died on a cross similar to that one that hangs here. He died for your sins. He's the only one that can pay the penalty of sin. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. He is our hope. He is our hope today. Won't you confess your sins to him? Ask him for his forgiveness. The Bible says that whosoever... Romans chapter 10, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord, asking forgiveness of sins, shall be saved from those sins. Keep in mind, the wages of sin is death. Not just the death of this body, not just the death that my neighbor Joe went through, but the cost of sin is, is a death that separates you from God for time and eternity in a place called hell that no one no one wants to go to. No one wants to go there. Won't you receive Jesus today? Won't you know him? If you're not sure, you know, ask me. If you're watching online, say, I'd like to know more. We'll reach out to you privately and give you the verses you need to know from God's word. How you can know you're a child of God today. Amen? Amen. 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 All right. Now the aforementioned correction that uh, Alice gave us here, page 372, Jesus keep me near the cross. We'll do one and four. You're welcome to stand if you want to stretch your legs before prayer requests. One and four. Jesus, keep me near the cross. There a precious fountain, free to all a healing stream flows from Calvary's mountain. In the cross, in the cross, be my glory. Just beyond the river. 
other prayer requests. Remember the ones that we mentioned. Let's remember Dean Downey. Dean Downey. Let's remember Steve. Steve, if you're watching, buddy, we're uh, thinking about you on our hearts. Steve Becker and Robin. Remember them. We got and the good news we're celebrating with Roy. And uh, just keep him in prayer. Good to have Joanne with us today. She's feeling up to be here today. Always a blessing to have you, my dear. Just so many others that are coming back and just, just thankful for that. For every quest this morning. Yes. John's cousin's wife, Jean. Same, same reason with cancer? Or, or you're not sure? Okay. Okay, so let's remember Jean and Grace. <clears throat> In hospice care. All right. Who else? Yes. Who else? Debbie, you got any online? Uh, that was a message uh, that her Aunt Marcia had a malignant tumor removed from the right side of her head and was recovering from surgery. The doctor says she was able to get everything. So pray, that's a prayer for her. Okay, and that was Marcia, was her name? Yes, it was Aunt Marcia. Aunt Marcia, okay. Tumor removed, praise the Lord. Thank you, Robin. Anybody else? All right, we had Carol's praise with uh, uh, new, new grandson. We're just thankful for that. Keep praying for, for Sam and for Cody. Just about the time you get used to having one, you have two, and everything changes, right? So we're excited for them, though. God bless their growing family. Amen. Amen. All right, unspoken requests. God sees your hands and your hearts. Let's take a moment for silent prayer, and uh, then we'll pray together. Lord God, we thank you for this day you blessed us with. Uh, we appreciate, Lord, your love, and your mercy, and your grace. We, uh, we never want to take that for granted. Father, guide and direct our path. We uplift uh, our brother Dean Downey, Lord, who's uh, he's in your hands. We just pray, God, according to your will, that uh, that would be done. We uplift Steve Becker, Lord, and Robin. And we're thankful for Robin's request for her Aunt Marcia, Lord, and uh, for the praise uh, for a successful surgery there. We pray for her continued recovery. Pray for my neighbor's wife, Lord Marsha Autry, that uh, it would be at her during this this difficult time of losing uh, a husband. Lord, I believe uh, 57 years. We just pray for for Marsha at this time too. We pray for uh, for John's cousin, Lord, uh, his wife Jean. Lord, and also for Grace uh, entering uh, hospice care. We pray for Catherine's request of Donna Burris, who has fallen and and, and broken. Uh, broken a leg. We just pray, God, that uh, you'd help her to heal, help those around her support group to, to pitch in and, and help out there. And Lord, for the other unspoken requests, uh, we just uh, uplift these to you as well. We pray for our church as a whole. We've got 
So many people that are planning so many things, Lord, just help us to be about your business and your work and to make the best, the best choices in our lives. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God's people said together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Ushers, would you come at this time? We're going to receive our morning offering. For those that are watching online, we have an online giving method now. If you're doing that for the first time, we just want, we try to remind everybody, Debbie was so good I'm doing this, but I think it was, was, was Bobby a couple weeks ago. You do have to register your information if you're doing it for the first time. So you have to go through and register your information, and then you uh, uh, can, can click through and give either with a debit out of your bank account or a, a credit card that way, but you do have to register that first time, and then it will know you after that. So, all right, ushers, go ahead. We appreciate your giving and your gifts and your faithfulness for the ministries here, financially. Doxology. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him, all the heavenly hosts. Thank you, John and Gloria. Amen. Father God, again, thank you for the gift and for the giver today, and Lord, for your faithfulness in helping St. John's, uh, Lord, as a, a body of believers, meet folks at the point of their need. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you. All right, as you remain standing, our concluding song before we go downstairs, and uh, in my case, get fat. And all that good stuff downstairs. And as we do appreciate Carol's announcement for Mother's Day, we'll have just a little bit more of a meal with our special guests being here for that day. So feel free to invite family and friends. And uh, uh, it, it's, it's going to be an exciting day. I'm really anxious to hear, uh, hear Lindsay speak about baby Colton and see, see the little guy that will be prayed for. And uh, uh, I'm just uh, thrilled to see God in action, isn't it? Amen. Amen. 254. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Let's do the first and the last. 254. <laughs>
what can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. On the last, this is all my hope and peace. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. This is all my righteousness. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Amen. That's all that will work. It's the precious blood of Jesus to wash away sin. Amen. Been a good service today. Been good to have you today. Such a blessing, too, as always, uh, to have Wally and, and Brunetta with us. Uh, they're uh, members of Zion, and uh, we're thankful for them here. They're always, always a blessing. You're always welcome here today. Good to see Kay back, too. Uh, just, uh, it's always a blessing to, to see her. Amen. Any other announcements? Anything I forgot? I'll ask it then. All minds clear. All right. Amen. Let's close in prayer. Father God, thank you for your blessings of today. We thank you for our, our nation. Father, we pray that uh, she would turn her heart back to you wholly and completely. That you could follow you and hear your voice. Help us, God, individually to hear your voice and to do what you call us to do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Walk with the king and be of good cheer, Jesus said. I've overcome the world. Thank you for being here.